Okay, hello everybody and welcome, welcome, welcome to our introduction to the greatest love activation. My name is Cher O'Rourke and I'm delighted to have you join us this evening. I'm delighted to join you this evening and uh, have this time, this one hour time to connect with you, to talk about, to explore, you know, the idea of greatest love and what greatest love is, what it means to each and every one of us. So we welcome one and all from all around the world. And I am one of the master teachers at Master Shah Dao Center here in the city of Toronto in Canada. It's my honor to be so. And I am delighted to be joined by another master teacher who is one of the master teachers at Master Shah Dao Center in San Francisco. Though she is residing on the East Coast at this time, and she is a friend, she is a colleague, uh, she's an extraordinary person, really, with many, many accomplishments. And she's a Tao calligraphy teacher, uh, Guanyin lineage teacher, and so much more. She embodies all of the beautiful qualities of love, forgiveness, compassion, light. And so I want to have her join me immediately uh, so that we can start this evening off. Hello, dear Hui Ling. Glad to have you join us here this evening and for us to be doing this event together. Welcome. Thank you, Cher, and hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> um, you know, this is, a, I believe this is the first time we actually co-teach together, uh, but you and I will always feel uh, some special connections, but this is the first time we actually uh, co-teach together. So I'm really looking forward uh, to tonight and also the actual workshop, uh, because when we feel some connections, um, and then when we are serving together, there are always some really uh, incredible moment, like a magical moments uh, will unfold. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And also the topic is just, uh, I feel is one of the most important topic for each of us, uh, whether we are in a relationship or not, but this topic is for everyone and is so much needed at this time. So I'm so honored to be here. So uh, I see that we have 29 people here joining us uh, now. So hello, everyone. We do, we do, and more coming in, you know, people from all around the world. There are people from Europe and North America. And this subject, of course, expands across uh, across the world. You know, when Hui Ling and I, uh, you know, had decided we were going to do something together, uh, we of course looked at what you know what what we are passionate about. You know, maybe what our you know our strength is. Of course, Hui Ling is a Tao calligraphy teacher. She writes beautiful calligraphies. I am a Tao song teacher. I love to sing Dao song. I love to teach about Dao song. And so we wanted to combine these two things. One of the main reasons we wanted to as well is that this is the focus that Master Shah has for this year. He's talked about it again and again, Dao calligraphy, Dao song, Dao calligraphy, Dao song. So we wanted to dive into it. We thought, okay, what is, you know, February is the month of love, apparently. And uh, we wanted to make love your superpower because I think when we have love as a superpower, we really can do anything. You know, love is what really opens our heart, you know, to, to self, to family, to community, to, uh, to what our inner strengths are when we have love we can truly, you know, uh, accomplish great things because 
as Master Shah says in his core teaching, love melts all blockages, transforms all life. So Hui Ling, I want to start by asking you what love means to you, because it means different things to different people. And we invite you all who are here to share in the chat, you know, what love means to you. What is your definition of love? Because I think it's different for everybody. And in some cultures, you know, I think the Eskimos have something, uh, they have many different words. You know, this is one of our indigenous peoples here in Canada. They have many different words for, for love as they do for snow, <laughs> which we also have a lot of in Canada. <laughs> but, and there, I, there are really good reasons for that, I'm sure. But I want to ask you, Hui Ling, what, what does love mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a really a um, uh, uh, question. It's like we can uh, spend like a week <laughs> to answer it. And that's why there's so many words uh, in so many different cultures describe love. Um, but for me, love is definitely uh, something from the heart. And uh, as I uh, have been on this um, spiritual journey, uh, my definition of love has really uh, expand, you know, it's no longer about um, personal love or family love, but much greater love. That kind of love is like uh, beyond, it is still include the personal love, but it's beyond personal and it's expand to communities, uh, to like humanity and to like our relationship with mothers. So whenever that I go for a walk in the forest or in nature, I really feel this kind of unconditional love. And uh, then as I start on this spiritual journey and there are moments that, uh, you know, I, I feel lost or I feel something is missing. And then I feel this force, this like, like it's almost like illuminate light but it's more than that it it's kind of like lighter my past and allow me to uh to see more clearly or sometimes like i'm still not able to see clearly but it's also kind of like like a wave like ocean of love like carry me uh to where i need to be and um it has been you know to learn more about what is love, the greatest love, and also understand that that love, that greatest love, is one of our superpowers that we have been given. Um, it's absolutely so important um, in not just my physical life, but you know, my spiritual uh, journey. And it has allowed me to really get to learn more about myself and others and um, so in a way I would say at the stage of my life the love the greatest love is really about unconditional like acceptance or surrender <laughs> um, and it's also connected compassions and service and more and definitely also gratitude it's something that can open the heart and expand the heart yes so yeah. what about you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i really agree with everything you're saying i i am i am there and you know i i'll just share with everybody because sometimes we it's difficult you know conceptually sometimes to think about what is unconditional love I mean, we only really know something, I think, when we have the experience of it, you know, when we have the direct experience of it. And, you know, for a long time, you know, I wanted to have a universal love. That was most important to me because there are, you know, we have different people in our lives. You know, if you have a partner, you know, we, we can, ex and, and there's romantic love, you know, and we can, we have 
we can have big expectations of that one person, that somehow that one person, if we find our true love, they will be the answer to all of our, our problems. <laughs> and of course, if you did find your true love, well, you're very blessed, but I'm sure you've come to realize that actually, no, they don't solve all your issues or problems at all. And, and nor should we expect any one person to do that. It's, I think it's really unfair to expect any one person to do that, whether it's your true love or it's a parent or it's, you know, uh, anyone in your life. And I think that, you know, we, I remember back years ago, always having this idea that I wanted to love everybody, you know, equally, but I didn't. And there was something inside of me that really needed to change. It had nothing to do with, with people. You know, we are who we are. We resonate sometimes more, more with one person than another. And that's a heart and soul connection. But I wanted to feel what I knew was I wanted to feel a more expanded kind of love and not just feel more strongly about this one than I did about, you know, another. And I worked on opening my heart chakra because I knew and learned from many great teachers, including Master Shah, that in order to truly, truly love unconditionally, have a much more expanded love, I needed to open my heart. I needed to purify my heart. And so I began to do that work. And there's no place to arrive or get to. That work is never finished, but it's improved and increased. And my heart has opened more and more and more. And I remember walking down the street one day in Toronto. And suddenly, I looked at a stranger who was walking by me, and I felt love for that person who I did not know, who was not really looking back at me, but I looked at him and I felt my heart open and I felt love for him. And I knew that I had taken a big step in achieving more unconditional love, greatest love because of that, that, that moment. And so I continued, you know, to work to develop that. Yeah, um, um, I actually had a similar experience. Um, I think when we experienced that kind of moment, even if it was just short time, it's, it's like it, like your heart is no longer the same heart. And my experience with that was um, in two thousand fifteen that I was in Hawaii, and the master shots. Um, uh, made me a, a master teacher and when i received that spiritual transmissions i remember the next morning when i woke up and we were in this very busy honolulu you know the uh the hostel and i went to the starbucks and um it was very very busy the line was so long uh and and then I have people keep cutting my lines <laughs> but i actually had to get to the retreat on time but I just connect with that spiritual transmissions and suddenly like I feel this complete expansion. Like I was kind of by the door until the line was so long. But um, I, I just look around and it was like this whole divisions, like the, the buildings and the, the beach, the ocean, everything started to become like one. And there are people like cut my line from me and there are people I don't know, there's lots of people, the tourists. And it was really, really busy. There was loud music, but I, my heart just like, wow, I suddenly feel so much love for everyone and everything there. Then I was like, wow, that is probably how it feels like when you experience that oneness love, that universal love you're talking about. It's like, it doesn't matter if we know the person or, if, you know, or if we have been the place or whatever the experience we have with the, the person in front of us, that we just feel this 
openness. Like it's like so open that we can connect with them as one. To me, that's a really significant spiritual moment. Uh, and I always want to return back to that moment whenever I feel the disconnections or a separations. Uh, and you're right, because sometimes even people in a relationship, they might not even feel that. Right? So to actually learn how to develop and focus on your heart, the heart chakra, and the other technique and tool to develop that kind of, to, or to experience that kind of experience, it's absolutely magical. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and if you can be all loving in a very busy <laughs> Starbucks, you know, you're making progress for sure. We have some of our, you know, um, some of our participants sharing and we invite you all to share. Let us know what does love mean to you? You know, because it can be different, you know, for all of us. And Jeffrey's saying love to me uh, deep desire to contribute to the well-being of another being without asking for anything. It is an expression of my heart and soul. Yeah, beautiful, Jeffrey. Absolutely. Serving others. If that feels really good and that feels like love to you without any expectation. It's unconditional, right, what you're doing. Um, Yona says, we are one. Yes, Yona, we are one. We are one. And that's, you know, Weiling is saying, you know, about uh, it's the disconnection, right? Or feeling separated that makes us feel unloved or find it difficult to love, right? Uh, Charlotte says, the first thing I think of is a mother's love, warm, embracing, soft, safe, unconditional. If we can experience this kind of love in other relationships, we are indeed fortunate and blessed. Yeah, absolutely, Charlotte. You know, feeling safe with others, feeling like they're not going to judge you, right? They're, 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 there is a softness, you know. Uh, is, yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, Yona, love is to be in harmony with oneself and others. Absolutely. Uh, and Layla, who's on Facebook, is sharing the meaning of love evolves with time. Now it means more about finding peace with everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some great sharings, right? Okay, we are in the right group. Yeah, these are for sure. I was thinking about, you know, Hui Ling, one of the teachings Master Shah, you know, offers us is around what creates suffering, right? And suffering is, you know, we want something and we can't have it. You know, it can be we want something and we can't have it, or we have something and we don't want it. <laughs> and we can talk about that in terms of people around. This. You know, sometimes we're with people we may not want to be with. We're forced to be with them. Maybe we live with them. Maybe we work with them, right? And we have struggle. And then, you know, someone's kind of far from us who we would love to be with or spend time with, but we can't be near them. This is the uh, de one definition of suffering. Mm -hmm. And so how do we alleviate that suffering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, that um, what you have shared um, reminds me also a, a quote. Um, uh, well, people say it's Rumi, but uh, there, there are also other, but probably a lot of you know this quote. Um, so it, it's a beautiful quote. It, it's supposed to be by Rumi. Um, it says, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barrier within yourself that you have built against it. So, um, you know, whether it's someone that we really want to be together or we really don't want to be together, uh, this can be also, you know, not just relationship, but like at work or uh, sometimes even with ourselves. Um, for me, I, I 
think the key is to find out what is that barrier, what is that negative information that build that barrier. Uh, and sometimes when that message or that barrier is, is being um, transformed, uh, whether it was forgiveness, was compassion, or a deeper understanding, you know, there are many ways we, we can uh, uh, transform that. Uh, we might actually find like, oh, actually we really connect with this person or we actually really have shared a lot in, in comments. And so uh, I, I really re resonate with that, uh, the code. And, um, and we are so lucky that we have so many ways, you know, and, and so simple, like through the Tao songs, through singing that vibrate the sound from the heart. Uh, like when you sing, it's so beautiful. It's like ah, oh, just melting your heart, and like melting the the barrier. Or um, through the calligraphy uh, that Master Shah has offered to us, and uh, the Tao calligraphy, and that you know we can start from very simple, and it's like we can do it any times anywhere to start to melt that barrier. You're exactly right. You know, we need tools, right? We need to, wanting to change something isn't, isn't enough, but, but we do need to change something. We need to change whatever the barriers are, as you say, you know, in the quote, that are inside ourselves that prevent us from experiencing love and from feeling it, from being able to see it, because it is all around us. It really is and the love flows and it needs to flow. It needs to flow from us, you know, out, out and it needs to flow in. Mm -hmm. And so we need to figure out what the barriers are or even if we can't figure out what they are, if we can't identify them, we just need tools to break them down, to dissolve them. And of course, Tao calligraphy, Tao song, are two of those tools that Master Shah has given us because they raise our frequency and our vibration. Mm -hmm. And when our vibration is higher, we know that love is one of the highest vibrations, right? It's been measured, right, in terms of frequency and vibration. I can't remember what that system is that measures <laughs> frequencies and vibrations, but uh, it's, it's, it's been done. And it's one of the highest vibrations so we need to get our vibration up so that barriers break down and we can let the love flow in let the love flow out and in that way healing happens right healing of, of many things not just our capacity to love but much more mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and sometimes allow that love flow is actually exactly the healing we need and you know the 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 quote about the barrier um it's, it's so interesting um because I, I believe many of us here that we all had those experiences like those spiritual moments and whether you think you're spiritual or not i think we all have those moments that um we feel there's something bigger than us is supporting us we may not be able to like identify it or we may not have a specific like spiritual connections or you know religious connection you know some people they say oh i feel god's love i feel uh jesus love mother mary's love buddha's love guang's love and uh you know i think what really started my awakening of my spiritual journey which is so key um for my physical life was when I was doing my PhD and I really like hit the buttons and I was just like so overwhelmed with everything and um, I won't go into detail but uh, but I I just keep feeling something is missing and even after I all of this like physical life things all kind of start to fall into the, the right place it's like suddenly uh, I'm become even more aware something is missing 
because before I was too stressed to feel something is missing. <laughs> then what was missing, really, it's really up to the last couple years I realized it's the um, awareness that this greatest love, this or what we call the source love, is always within us. And as we clear and transform those barriers, not only we can let the love to flow in and flow out, that we literally become, like become that love. And those moments like, wow, that's the highest healing. <laughs> because you're just like, your presence, like, you know, it. everything is just that, the greatest love, the unconditional love. And in Master Shah teaching, he has shared with us that that greatest love melt all blockages and can transform all life. And this is really true. So um, I would love to actually hear everybody's experience. What experience you have like with the greatest love that really had transformed like some aspect of your life that you're just like, wow, like you're so inspired, like I want to be that greatest love. And I think we all have those moments. Um, so uh, I'm sure Sherry, you have that. That's why you're doing what you're doing because you're spreading the greatest love. So uh, would you like to share a moment that you have those experience? You know, I, they happen every day, I have to say, you know, no matter what's going on, it isn't that I don't experience stress, you know, at times I do. Um, but I, I spend time, you know, every day uh, practicing. I spend time using the tools Master Shah has, has given all of us, made available to all of us. And so, whether, you know, I'm doing personal things, you know, whether I, I'm in the bank or I'm in the grocery store uh, or I'm taking a walk, whenever I encounter people or, or nature or animals even, um, you know, I ran into a fox the other day on my walk and it was a bit startling, you know, because I'm in the middle of a city and, and though I, I love, you know, animals in nature, uh i you don't usually see foxes in the city and we were very close you know he's kind of startled me it was very early morning and i remember you know he kind of came out from behind a tree and stopped and looked at me and and i looked at it and there was fear that came up right away in the first moment and then the next moment was why should i be fearful you know I'm going to radiate, you know, my my love out to this animal who's so beautiful, was so beautiful in front of me. And he he or she, you know, was looking up at me. And the moment I let go of the fear and I moved into the love, he, he she relaxed and looked and we just stood there, which seemed like for a minute, but it was, I'm sure it was less than that. But it was a moment of an exchange, you know, heart to heart, soul to soul. And, you know, the animal turned and off it went. And then I continued on my walk. And that to me was just a simple example of dropping any fear, you know, any anything that was not, you know, love, basically. And so I try to practice that each day when I get stressed or I feel, you know, anything that is not love, um, working or using the tool to transform it, to just change it. And so it's about ha being aware. You know, I think it's about just being aware. Mm -hmm. That is a magical moment. <laughs> yeah, to uh, bump into that encounter, I'm, I'm sure that also like for the fox, it's like, wow, I met a very special human being. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, yeah, so, and that is so inspiring. It's like our goal is not just like a particular moment, but every day, like every moment, it's a moment of greatest love. And that that's really, I believe is why we're here. 
uh, you know, my yoga teacher has said, um, this is years ago when I was doing the yoga teacher training, and he's always saying, we're a spiritual being having human experience. And I believe that, that love, when we really can activate that greatest love within us, and we can like access it and we can be that embodiment every moment and not just on the special days like you know uh you know, particular days of the years and months um that we are truly be that spiritual being that we truly are and so like yeah to access or activate that greatest love it's to me it's also like to return to who we are and I love, you know, um, in the that n newsletter that, you know, you talk about the, the gracious love is our superpower. And I was thinking about this. It's a really catchy line, but it's also true because greatest love, it's a creator's power. It's a source power. So that is a superpower yeah. <laughs> and that we can access. And... Oh, I, I just love that line. It's like, wow, you know, um, we all want to have a superpower because superpower is like superheroes. Superpower can uh, change or, you know, create something really miraculous. And mm -hmm. so uh, I believe this is what we want to start this, uh, you know, this workshop, even though it's a, a three hour workshop, but um, we can learn very simple tool because sometimes people might think oh gracious love that feels like so much responsibility and so heavy but you know what you had shared with us is like this is actually everyday life and it can enhance like it's a little moment counts i think it's like little moments of greatest love that make our life on amati earth at this time so special Yes, I, I totally agree. And I, I'm going to read a few more um, posts and just see, Hui Ling, you know, what other people are sharing, um, you know, about what love means to them. So Tash says, to me, it is acceptance without condition. It then allows us to experience everyone and everything as they are. So, so true, Tash. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and from Facebook, Indira's on, because we have, you know, people watching via Facebook. Uh, being present and being there in the experience with self and other loved ones, sharing compassion and kindness, all the yumminess. Yeah, yeah, Indira, agreed. Catherine says, leaving self behind and reaching out to someone needing love to reduce their suffering. Absolutely. I mean, that we know that just makes us feel good immediately. You know, it's very, it's very, uh, it's a beautiful exchange when that happens. Joan says acceptance and appreciation. Absolutely. Acceptance is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we need to develop these other qualities to get to greatest love, right? And that's, you know, acceptance, appreciation are two of the qualities we need to develop to get to greatest love. And Sherry says, love has different meanings to me. I easily feel unconditional love a lot of the time, feeling complete oneness and equality with everyone. I also think of love as a simple feeling. I can love everyone, but I can still feel greater love for certain people than others no different than my love for flowers. I love them all, yet my heart feels more love from one flower <laughs> than another. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. And Sean, my experience is that love works like a funnel. The more love we can pour into ourselves, the more love that we can pour into others. Very true, Sean. Self-love uh, is key, right? Uh, and... Yeah, peak love experience, letting, Jeffrey says, letting go of the illusion of separation, only love remains, oneness state, love, gratitude, bliss at the same time. And Georgette, love is difficult to explain with words. For me, it's when I'm in a deep connection and in harmony with everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful sharing from everybody. So what are some of the other 
and everybody, you know, we're going to, uh, Wei-Ling and I are going to offer everybody a blessing, Dao song, Dao calligraphy blessing as part of our session today. We're going to do a couple of giveaways for the workshop. So hang around. Uh, Wei-Ling, what are some of the other qualities you think we need to develop to get to greatest love? Because I think it is a, it is a process and, and we all, every people are expressing that, you know, as we have as well, that there have, there are moments when we feel it, but we don't feel it all the time. I mean, if we, you know, could be in the greatest love condition all of the time, we, we would, you know, be in another realm, <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> but we can develop it more and more as we're here. What do you think? Yeah, you know, um, the first thing that comes to me is always um, the self compassions. You know, when we are um, being critical or judgmental to ourselves, and even sometimes we don't even know that we're doing that. So, like, you know, when we pay attention to how many times we say, should, I should have done this, I must do this, I could have done this. Those are a very subtle moment that we are not actually being very compassionate for ourselves. We are actually judging ourselves that we should have done better. And those moments, we're not practicing acceptance. And um, so uh, self-compassion to me is always the key is how do we remain curious but not judgmental or critical for ourselves. and. Um, also, um, so I guess the curious is one of the, the like, not quality, but, um, like, approach, like, just remain curious. Sometimes, you know, we might have a situation with someone, like, in a conversation, or even, like, exchange with email. We might feel like, oh, not loved or heard, uh, not respected, but instead, right away, jump in, like, oh, I must not be good enough or lovable or uh so something wrong with me or something wrong with the person <laughs> how could the person be so rude is remain curious and say hmm this is so interesting why we have this exchange what is really the message behind it um and that really take a practice and um to continue to like open our heart and that way we it's just like when we are in those situations, then curiosity come out first instead of judgments. And so to me, the curiosity is like hand in hand with compassion. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. You know, you're making me think that we need to ask questions. So when you say curiosity, it's about asking questions, right? So when some, when there's conflict to ask, what what's happening you know why why is this person responding in this way why am i responding or feeling this way there's something gnarly there mm -hmm. and so if you ask the questions you know if you're curious enough to keep going and ask then you'll find some answers and so it really a lot is about looking within ourselves as well of course number one looking inside ourselves right and as you say, having that compassion, not being judgmental of ourselves or the other person, but rather wanting to know why and how we can change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I love this because then we're kind of keep uh, take each other deeper. <laughs> this, because then it was you're talking, I'm thinking, wow, yes, it's about asking questions. Um, and from where we ask the question. If we ask the question from the space of love or from the space, the condition of love, instead of the fear or hurt or pain or anger um, or sadness, then we will, that curiosity will be very different. Um, so for me, you know, uh, I've always wanted to learn more about what kind of tool that I can keep uh, myself in that space of love or in that condition of greatest love and over the years you know I had learned um, 
quite a few things. I want to say like so many. I know many people here has you know longer, you know, be on your journey much longer、um, than me.、Um, but for me,、um, I found that the Dao calligraphy has been really one of the most effective and efficient way. And just for some of you, maybe you are new to the Dao calligraphy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We will give you some more.、Uh, Details,、um, introductions,、um, and more sharings. The wisdom of Dao calligraphy.、Um, next Friday,、uh, but today, if I could just simply share the Dao calligraphy, you know, it start it, it's the Chinese calligraphy. If I can、um, just demonstrate,、uh, I think we have some time.、Uh, the Chinese character has many different stroke.、Um, for example, so. We are. The topic is greatest love, so it's the it's two words. 大爱 So 大 means the greatest. 爱 means love. So you see, there's a three stroke. There's thirteen. And、um, when this turned into the Dao calligraphy, it's originally from the oneness writings. So. Instead of totally sixteen strokes, so we write the Dao calligraphy oneness writings from that very first stroke all the way to the last one. It's only from here, here, only one stroke. So,、um, the Dao calligraphy is. A oneness source art, a transformative art, but it really is a oneness writing, right from that very stroke. And I was talking, but、uh, ideally, it's actually also one breath. It's one stroke, one breath. So the oneness writing, the Dao calligraphy, will bring the oneness, the oneness of our soul, heart, mind, and body. And how do we beat that? State of greatest love. Our heart had to be aligned with our mind, our soul, us all aligned. And、um, today, as you know, share was sharing. I was just so so thinking, this one is writing the da i the da calligraphy. Is it allows us to be one with the source, the creator, and that is why da calligraphy is so powerful. It brings us to be one with the source and. Uh, with the creator, with Tao, whoever you connect to, the highest that、um, that spirit for you.、Uh, so that's why I, you know, Sharon is also on the way to become a Tao calligraphy teacher. And he writes beautifully. I think you're going to be a calligraphy teacher very soon.、Um, we, you know, both have lots of experience with the calligraphy through Master Shah's writings that. And combined with the Dao song, how that bring us in that state or space of love,、um, because I think what you also share about the the fox, it's like you quickly bringing yourself into that space of love, and that fear right away was dissipate, was replaced by just love, and the fox feel it, right? So,、uh, yes. Yeah, so true.、Um... Yeah, beautifully put, Wailing. I was thinking the same thing actually that you could be a Dao Song teacher <laughs> because you have a beautiful Dao Song, and and we can all do these things actually. And so Wailing and I, you know, next Friday,、uh, you know, February twenty fifth, we're doing this three hour workshop. We'll post the information about that in the chat, and it's from five to eight Eastern time. And we wanted to spend a few hours with you then, because we want to, you know, tonight we wanted to, you know, just talk a little bit about how,、uh, what, you know, greatest love is, you know, and how we can activate it. And we're actually going to do practices to activate it, you know, next Friday. We're really going to go even deeper into what are the things we need to very practically do. To clear, you know, our blockages and really unite, you connect, you know. As Wei Ling says, we need to 
uh, feel the oneness. We need to be in the oneness field. And the more we are in the oneness field, the more we experience it directly, the more we can continue to create it. And these are two of, you know, the most precious tools that Master Shah has given us to do that. So, so we would like to actually offer everyone, you know, a, a, a blessing. And then we want to hear from you, you know, about how you're feeling, what your experience is with it. And then we'll do a couple of giveaways, you know, we'll check through guidance. We're going to invite all of you to to join us next Friday night to, like I said, go even deeper mm -hmm. and ask the questions, keep asking questions, you know, of ourselves, you know, um, and what it is, you know, that needs to shift, you know, for us and with us. Well, having acceptance also, you know, at the same time. Uh, so it's a beautiful balance. It's a delicate balance and we can do it. And I, I'm also thinking, you know, I'm really curious um, about if everybody can share also, um, why do we want to activate the greatest love? And I think this is a question that it means it, there's some re unique reasons uh, for each of us. And I am a person I'm big on finding why because it's like an anchor when I am hitting the block and then I go back to why I want to do this in the first place. Then it helped me um, because on this journey needs um, to be the embodiment of the greatest love. It's not always <laughs> easy. <laughs> Sometimes it can be quite challenging, but it is also very rewarding. It's very fulfilling um, because we get to experience for me, um, at least who I am, I, I'm still discovered, but to discover who I am, it's really also about forgetting myself to see how I am part of everything and everyone. And so then that from that individuality to, ex to that universal connection, that expansion is, it, to me, is a very spiritual experience. And so, um, I'm curious why, because we have so many people registered for tonight's intro and there are many of you who will probably watch the recordings, but I, I'm really curious, you know, um, why do you want to activate? What is your reason? Why do you want to activate your greatest love? You know, to have the superpower, how are you going to use the superpower? <laughs> so. Uh, yes, I, I'm really curious and I would really love to hear people's uh, sharing on this. Okay, there you go, everybody. There's the question for you. Um, why do you want to activate your greatest love superpower? And it's, it's, a, it's a good question, you know. Um, what do we do with it <laughs> once it starts to get activated? Um, you know, of course we want to spread love, right? We want to feel love, we want to experience it. Because, you know, to me, it's, it's something that is very expansive and not at all singular. And, you know, some of the qualities we talked about, and one, one that I think is, is really important to really develop that greatest love is, is respect, right? And I think a couple of you may have mentioned something like that, you know, mm -hmm. if not that word exactly, but something very, very similar. How do we treat others? How do we respond to others? How do we perceive others? And when we, our love is expansive, I don't feel we can be hurt, mm -hmm. you know, that we just don't get hurt because we understand that if someone is trying to hurt us, it's because they're hurting, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we respect their place, their position, wherever they may be and hope that they respect ours. Um, but when love is big, um, it, it is, it's unconditional. 
Yeah, I love that. That courageous love, that superpower make us like courageous, brave, and fearless. <laughs>、uh, that that is absolutely、uh, true, and it's amazing. It's a very deep insight.、Um, I was also thinking, you know, some of you may be thinking, "Oh, I come here, I really want to learn how this can improve my relationship," but you guys have not talked at once about relationship.、Um, but the thing is, this is like much bigger than a personal relationship. If you can activate the greatest love within you, and you can be that channel or that connections of that. You know whether it's God's love or angels' love, whatever you connect to, then your relationship,、uh, whether it's a work relationship, romantic relationship, everything will start to unfold in a way that truly beyond you can comprehend. So it's not like we are not talking about it. We're actually talking something bigger <laughs> that is actually included. So whatever you learn tonight or the next Friday. That you can apply it not just for your romantic relationship or finding a true love, but it can apply in literally every aspect of your life,、mm. and that's our kind of like our greatest love gift. We're giving you a big love gift, not a small one. I mean, personal relationship is very important. Finding true love is very important, but this true love or the greatest love is much bigger.、Um, Yeah, so I just want to mention this. <laughs> yeah, so there are messages. Do you want to read、uh, some of those posts? Yeah. So、um, let me see.、Uh, so thank you everyone for sharing. And Margaret said, "Greatest love is the door to the virtues of all tendas." So just for some of you might not know what's a tenda. Tenda is ten greatest. The Tao Creator Source qualities. Oh, it's going very fast. Let me go up.、Uh, we need the Da Ai, the Greatest Love, to melt blockages that prevent us from developing all of them, and our heart has to expand to make room for this other quality to be nurtured.、Mm, yes, the true. That's why the Greatest Love is the first one, and it's like the essence of all of them.、Uh, Let me read one more.、Uh, Doctor Julian said, "My mother gave me unconditional love, but she passed away in 1988. That hurts me deeply. As I grew older, I realized that waiting for someone else to give me unconditional love just made me feel frustrated and depressed. Now I realize that when we tap into the greatest love, we are opening to the biggest gift." To the universe already has for us, and we learn to give ourselves the greatest self love as well. Then we can share love with others in a more fulfilling way. Wow, beautiful, well said.、Um, yeah, that's also a great example of what you just shared. When the love is so expensive that we cannot get hurt, and this is really important point. You know, especially the last two years, there are so many losses. Like many people lose loved ones. Um, and of course, when we lose a loved one, there will be pain and sadness. We feel hurt. But when you start to apply this great love in those moments, that when the sadness and pain comes, like Cher said, then you, you cannot be hurt. The love is so expansive. It's like you 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 feel there's actually no separations with you and the loved one who passed away. So wow, beautifully shared.、Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your sharing. We appreciate it. So, Huiling, shall we offer a, a,、um, a blessing, a Dao calligraphy, Dao song blessing? Yes.、Uh, um, how about to open open the heart a little more?、Mm -hmm. The greatest love, or what? What do you think? Yeah, definitely.、Um, as we talk about, you know, like we can spend like months. Actually, love is a topic we could just talk all the time, the whole year.、Um, but you know, a lot of time that I notice, you know, sometimes even for myself, like we say, we want to activate the greatest love, 
but our heart may not be open enough. There's some resistance to actually receive and to allow that gracious love flow. So we thought, oh, you know, we would like to, it's kind of like prepare all of us, you know, to for this next Friday's, the three hour workshop, as we all can benefit from open our heart further to activate the gracious love. So uh, we're going to offer a one minute blessings. So I will write the calligraphy and uh, share will sing. So I will let you lead and I will prepare the, the brush. Okay, thank you. thank you. So everybody, uh, yeah, let us all sit up straight and and open our hearts to receive this blessing and allow the Tao calligraphy, the Tao song to permeate, you know, our, our inner field to support us to open our heart further. As Hui Ling says, you know, there's more work each of us has to do. And the more we can be in this, you know, beautiful field, the more we can dissolve any barriers that may be preventing us from greatest love. So let us relax. If you wish to close your eyes, please do. And just breathe down into your core. Receive one minute Tao calligraphy, Tao song blessing to open our hearts further. Start. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How in Mandarin means perfect, get well. Okay. Thank you, Hui Ling. Let us know how you're feeling. such a beautiful singing oh what i am experiencing is um you know master shah talk about the feel 
whether the combination of the Tao song of you know opening the heart to activate that gracious love and the Tao calligraphy for the gracious love it's like wow it's like we are transported to this feel of heart like the Tao uh, or the source or you know the God's heart that the feel is like wow feel this like almost like feel like my soul being hugged and um, being carried and uh, it's just the even though this is a feel healing but it, the experience of physical body is so tangible as I'm writing like my whole body is so warm and just this like oh warm and fuzzy feelings you know I love animals so whenever I see them I'm just like whoa they're so cute that's what I'm feeling as I was listening to your song it just is so much love and the you know the blockage in the heart I could see in my for myself you know it's releasings so I you know I, I believe in the next Friday that three hours you know we're also going to connect with the Tao Chance which is also a feel of greatest love that we're going to just be in that feel uh, the songs and calligraphy it's going to just further open our heart uh, to activate that greatest love so whether it's help us to accept deeper or ask more curious questions from the space of love or can deeper connections um, and then join together as a community to offer more service of gracious love uh, i just feel my heart feels so open yeah how is that for you because the song i i have not actually hear that song like i know every time I sing is a little bit different but this is quite different yeah thank you so much i mean I, I i can still feel this vibration in my heart chakra and right away when you started to write you know greatest love or da i i could feel an instant connection you know between the calligraphy and you with me and with everybody here and that this instant field started to form through the Tao calligraphy writing, through the Tao song singing. And we were all held so beautifully within the field. And again, I can still really feel it in my heart chakra. Uh, there's a real tingling sensation happening there. And I realized that everybody's presence, you know, this is why it's so important also to gather in community and to practice together, to be in the field together, because everybody's heart is contributing to the field. Everybody's love is is being added to the field. And of course, it's, it's down source, you know, love, light, frequency, vibration, positive information, energy and matter that comes through the transmissions but the transmissions activate our love, you know, our internal love, greatest love. And so that begins to come out and into the field as well. So I, I feel really, really good. I feel a little bit lightheaded actually, but really nice. And um, I'm excited for all of us to get together next Friday night for a few hours and to do even more. And so everybody, you know, I want you to, if you want to, I'm going to choose two people through guidance. I'm going to choose one. Whaling's going to choose one, but you have to have your camera on. So turn your camera on if you want to be considered. If you haven't registered, if you've already registered for the workshop, no need to apply. But if you haven't, then please apply by turning your camera on. And uh, Wailing and I are going to choose through guidance. Okay, cameras are coming on now. All right. Okay. So Wailing, you choose someone through guidance. I'm also going to do the same. Okay. I Wailing. choose one. Yeah, you choose one and you go ahead, you name your your person. 
uh, haven't, or, or you know, the I heard um, for Jeffrey. So congratulations, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, wonderful. Congratulations, congratulations. Jeffrey. And my guidance is Rosemary Pineda. Rosemary, congratulations, Rosemary. And everybody else, please join us. It, it's a very, uh, very reasonable, very affordable uh, event. And we're going to post the link in the chat. And so Jeffrey and Rosemary also, um, I'm going to ask Hitika, please post our email address. Dow Center Toronto at drshaw.com. So Rosemary and Jeffrey, write to us. Uh, please, and we will get you registered as our gift to you. And yeah, okay. So many wonderful messages in the chat. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I I'm already uh, one more thing um, before the, you, you share. Um, I really resonate with what you said about coming together to practice um, so we expand this field of greatest love. Um, a couple of days ago, uh, someone sent me, uh, you know, the Winnie the Pooh and the Piglet. Um, I, I love that. Um, and something that Piglet said, asked the Winnie the Pooh, how do you spell love? And Pooh said, Winnie the Pooh said, you don't spell it, you feel it. <laughs> so when we join together, we practice, we uh, use a tool we learned in that three hour, we practice together, then we are feeling it. And as we feeling it, then we can start to embody it. And then everyone that connect with us can feel that. So that is really key. Like it, the gathering is more than just a workshop. It has much deeper meaning when we have this intention that we want to act with the greatest love. I believe everybody has this very precious and special, or maybe more than one uh, reason. And when we have that as our intention and we come together and practice, like we can really activate our superpowers. <laughs> and so, and as a, as a group, oh, that's just going to be so nourished and uh, so transformative and I just I, I had this feeling it's gonna be also very magical uh, for all of us who are part of this workshop so thank you thank you Wei Ling and uh, thank you Winnie the Pooh <laughs> uh, love that of course uh, you know great wisdom coming from there uh, Sherry says, wow, thank you both so much. I instantly felt a divine presence in my message center, gently releasing and transmuting blockages and messages. Tears came as I felt so much love. Beautiful, Sherry. Thank you. Tash said, it was so magnified by the calligraphy writing. I now understand what Master is saying about Tao's song, Tao Calligraphy Power. Wonderful. Thank you, Tash. Sean, that was a beautiful blessing. Thank you for sharing your teachings on the greatest love activation. Thank you, Sean. Feliz, so very beautiful. Thank you, beloved teachers. I could see the little birds singing along in joy. I didn't want it to stop. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everybody, for your, your more, more messages there. This was great. This was, I really enjoyed this time with you, Hui Ling, and everybody here. Uh, you know, I, I've got, you know, stuff is, is, is swirling around inside my head, inside my heart about greatest love activation. And I, I think maybe we're starting, well, you know, of course, Master Shah started it all, but we're picking up on what Master Shah started. And, you know, we're running with it, everybody. Let's run with it. Because, you know, he, his wisdom, his greatest love, his service to each and every one of us is helping us to grow in ways that we may not have imagined we'd be able to do, you know, in this lifetime. 
And so we do want to run with it. We want to use the tools he's giving us and the wisdom he's giving us and be together, you know, as Hui Ling was saying, creating that beautiful love field. So we hope to see you all next Friday evening, the 25th, from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, join us, be there, and Hui Ling and I are each going to take, you know, some time to uh, do Tao calligraphy, Tao song separately, and then together with you. And uh, we're so looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Hui Ling, for your presence, your big heart. And I look forward to seeing you next Friday. Look forward to seeing uh, everyone who will be there. Thank you for being here this evening, everyone. On Facebook, everyone, you know, in our Zoom. We love you, love you, love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, all. Thank you. Good night. Love you, everyone. Thank you, Shir. Thank you, the team. Thank you, everyone. Love you. Bye-bye. See Bye -bye. you next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. See you all next Friday. Come join us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.